part of that chapter I was wanting to draw your attention to is there in in uh, verse 22 where it says how long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge and then it says turn ye turn you at my reproof behold I'll pour out my spirit unto you I will make known my words unto you so it says how long ye simple ones so it's talking about people who are simple I mean, and there's some things that they don't understand yet, and it's saying, how long will you just love simplicity and be happy to stay uh, in that uh, mindset of simplicity? So title of the message tonight is Knowing You Are Ignorant. Knowing You Are Ignorant. If you look at 2 Peter chapter 3, I'll tell you in a minute how this verse came up here but second peter chapter 3 peter says this second epistle beloved i now write unto you and both which i stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye be not mindful of uh, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before of the holy prophets and of the commandment of of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now, does the Bible say that since the beginning of creation, all things have continued and, and are exactly the same? It doesn't say that. But this... Verse 5, there for this they are wi they willingly are ignorant of. This they are willing they willingly are ignorant of. That by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Isn't He a patient, long-suffering God, for sure? And yet, while he's being patient, while he's giving us time, I mean, I, I, my mind always goes back to the days of Noah, where for 120 years they're building the ark. Noah's obviously preaching, and he says, I'm not going to destroy it for that long of a time. They had that much space to repent, right? But they didn't, and so therefore they, uh, they all perished. And someone says, how could he just destroy the whole earth, such an unloving God or whatever? But look, he was long-suffering, and they refused to turn to him. You know, I get the impression they mocked Noah and they didn't want, you know, they didn't want to believe what he said. So this day, however many years later, people still look back and they mock at the Lord and they mock the things. And, and uh, uh, there was a guy we talked to tonight. He wasn't necessarily mocking, but he was very set in his agnostic beliefs and not believing the Bible, thinking that mankind uh, made that up. And a lot of people do that. And, and uh, what I want to talk about here is just this idea of being ignorant okay i started to title the message dumb smart people or smart dumb people right and there's a lot of those out there but uh the way that the message kind of like uh, laid itself out i think it's just this idea of we need to recognize our ignorance and the world needs to recognize their ignorance first of all when it comes to salvation right i mean if someone doesn't know that they need to be saved if they don't know uh, these things, then they, 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 they are not, they are without excuse, right? Romans chapter 1 says this, verse 19 and 20, because that, that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, I can't speak for every man that exists. I can't speak to, you know, everybody always talks about the tribes in Africa who've never heard the gospel. I don't understand how that goes. I only know that in my heart and in my life, I knew from the time I was a child that there's, there's a God out there, right? 
I believe there's a measure of faith in everybody to receive that truth. And some people will be searching it, and they might not understand it exactly, but they know there's a, they're accountable to some God. They know that this world was created because it's obvious when you just look around. You know, right. they know that if if this world, if we just are here, there must be a purpose. There must be a creator. There must be something. And they they naturally should seek the truth. But it says some men decide in their heart to be willingly ignorant that there was a God and to be willingly ignorant of the evidence whenever they look around. And so, look, uh, all matters aren't necessarily as important as salvation, of course. But really, when it comes to just all different areas of our life, how often are we willingly ignorant? I mean, I'm, I, I'll admit, I'm ignorant of a lot of things, and sometimes it's willing <laughs> ignorance, right? I think about uh, uh, how often uh, a child, for instance, will just be like a genius when it comes to figuring out a cell phone or some kind of video game, and they just learn those codes you know, you're trying to keep some kind of secret from them, and all of a sudden they, they're just smart at figuring that out. Uh, what, and you're wondering, like, how, where did all that intelligence come from, right? Because just a minute ago, I tried to get you to read your book and, and to learn the answer to those, uh, to those questions on the test and everything, and you didn't, you didn't understand those. And I can speak from experience and say, I was the same way. What, whatever I learned in, in, uh, in school is what I wanted to learn. Okay, and so here are some things. Obviously, salvation is the biggest thing, but here are some just basic thoughts concerning uh, ignorance that might help us. Okay, and the first thing is this: people are ignorant of what they want to be ignorant of. We're ignorant of what we want to be ignorant of, and like I said, for me, like I, if I, if it had to do with something that was creative, uh, that was what my interest was. So as a kid, like there were certain things, you know, I could go to art class. Anything they threw at me, I wanted to learn how to sculpt, how to draw, how to do, how to paint, do all these things. And it was interesting. People said, how can you pick that up so fast? Because I want to, right? But then there were other subjects, math, for instance, and uh, science and history. There are certain aspects of those that I might like, but for, you know, for the most part, I was like, yeah, I'm not really interested in that. And so I did lousy in school, all right? Don't do what I don't do what I do. Do what I say, kids. <laughs> Pay attention and learn. Don't be ignorant. We need to decide in our hearts that I am not going to willingly be ignorant of certain things. Don't want to be ignorant. Okay. So there's we saw in Second Peter three five they were willingly ignorant. Now here's what happens when somebody who rejects God or rejects the Bible reads the Bible. They don't read the Bible and say, you know, let me see if I can figure out, you know, what the truth is. They read the Bible and say, let me see if I can find contradictions so that I can argue against these guys. When they see the evidence of creation, instead of looking at the clear evidence and saying, wow, where did this come from? They have already been taught something and that denies God. And so they say, well, let me figure out how I can interpret this evidence in such a way that, you know, uh, it, can, it can eliminate this possibility that there's a God and that there's a Bible. And so they're willingly ignorant of that. They, uh, they don't read the Bible for the right reasons. They look at creation, they, they, all the evidence out there of creation, all the evidence out there for a flood. They've got their own interpretation and they believe what they want to believe. And so uh, one of the things uh, that I find so interesting, maybe you've heard this before, probably have, but I remember reading an article uh, it was the first time I had ever heard about it. I don't know how, how long it had actually been, but some scientist in the lab is studying a dinosaur's bone and comes up to the, comes to the conclusion this bone still has some soft tissue in it. Now, my first thought would be probably then the earth isn't, the, you know, millions of years ago. These dinosaurs probably aren't 64 million years old. Probably they died a whole lot uh, more recent than that. But, you know, that didn't even enter into the article. Here's what the people in that, that were writing the article said. Uh, they were like, this says a lot about how long bones actually do are preserved. I mean, not even the thought, like, maybe it wasn't 64 minutes. It's just immediately just like, wow, I didn't know bones could preserve that long. 
we have to reconsider this thing. <laughs> so they're interpreting the evidence according to what they want to believe. You know, we were, uh, Brother uh, Nick and I were talking to this guy. And, uh, and, I, and basically what it comes down to is at some point you realize, look, it's going to come down to faith. I could sit here all day, try to argue with you, try to reason, to you, reason with you, but it's going to come down to whether you believe by faith or you don't believe. Look at Titus chapter 3. And by the way, this isn't just true of people that don't believe in God or, or even that aren't saved uh, necessarily. Sometimes saved people do the exact same thing. And if we're not careful, we all could end up doing that. And that is interpreting the evidence by preconceived ideas. And you don't really want to learn the answer. You just already decide you know the answer. And so you read the Bible or someone's preaching to you. And all you can think of is like, let's see how I can debate that. Let's see how I can come up with, a, with an answer to prove them wrong on this doctrine or something like that. Right. And uh, look at Titus chapter three. Starting in verse nine. This is the conclusion we have to come to at some point when we're talking to somebody about doctrine or false beliefs or, or even if they're not saved and we're trying to preach them, but avoid foolish questions. Now that doesn't mean, you know, the first time someone asks you a question that sounds like a foolish question that you just say, forget you, I'm not talking anymore, right? The concept is just like, don't, that, don't just go down that trail of these foolish questions and these things that are never gonna come to a final answer, right? Avoid foolish questions in genealogies, how many weird beliefs out there are based on genealogies and stuff like that? And contentions and strivings about the law. How much of that do you? I've argued with people about whether or not we're supposed to still be eating clean meat as opposed to unclean uh, animals and, and, uh, and about whether we're supposed to be obeying the Sabbaths and doing all this stuff. And it's just crazy whenever you talk. Oh, by the way, those are the same people that study the genealogies. But, <laughs> but it says avoid all that. And striving is about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. Vain means they're empty. They're not doing you any good. They're not worth anything, right? Don't do it. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted. Uh, sub, subverted would be kind of like the opposite of converted, wouldn't it? Like he's not, you're not going to convert him. He's, he's subverted. He's resisting. He's not going to listen to it. And then he says, and uh, I lost my place here. He says, knowing that uh, such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. At some point you realize, hey, this person is willingly ignorant. Now look, again, all of us can be in the same boat on certain subjects at certain times where we're willingly ignorant of things. So I'm not saying just be all... Uh, you know, just I know everything and I got all my doctrine just exactly, you know, nobody can prove me wrong. Look, then you enter into pride and arrogance and that's not going to be any good as well. OK, but but this is uh, uh, the case. We need to recognize hey, some people. They're just closed minded. Some people are not seeking the truth. And really what we need to be and what we need to seek out are those people who are truth seekers. Truth seekers. The Bible says, Luke uh, eleven nine says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now again, some people take that and say, Oh yeah, well I really want a million dollars. So I'm just going to start seeking, asking for money. No, you're not seeking truth. Then at that point, you're just trying to consume it under your lust. This is what I want. You're not really seeking what does God want. Because if you're really seeking that, He's going to give it to you. If you're really seeking the truth, God, show me what the truth is in your Bible. He's going to lead you that direction. Why would he not? He wants you to know. And so he's going to lead you that direction. But so often people will be closed minded and they won't be seeking the truth. This is why I love this work here and kind of this movement, you know, from which we all uh, have been influenced is because for the most part, what has drawn all these people together is the seeking for truth. Going down this road of, of what does the Bible say? You know, sometimes it was the, the evolution versus creationism, and you were seeking, what is the truth? You know, sometimes it was the Bible versions. You know, what is the, what is the right Bible? What is I'm supposed to have? And you began seeking the truth, uh, and you found the answers in the Bible, and you said, look, throw all my preconceived ideas away. Throw all my family members and my friends that are going to think I'm a total psycho for believing this. This is the truth. 
and I'm following after that. And if you're a truth seeker, that's, that is the main point, right? Uh, you, you don't want to just willingly be ignorant. We need to realize that we are ignorant on some things and we need to seek the truth, okay? So number one, we seek the things, uh, I mean, we're ignorant of the things that we want to be ignorant of. Okay, number two, people often try to cover up their ignorance with a false intelligence. <laughs> you ever notice that? Like they really don't know, but they're going to come and they're going to try to make it sound like they know. And they're going to give a bunch of fluff, you know, to the answer. And I thought about this. Uh, have you ever, again, I was bad at school, bad test taker, all that kind of stuff. I'm not bragging about that. <laughs> not bragging about that, but I was. But you know what sometimes I could do is I could get them to give me a good uh, score on my essay questions. Not because I knew the material, but because I was good at putting fluff in there. <laughs> and so, like I heard this, uh, this comedian was talking about this, and he, read, he was supposed to read this story. And, and then when he read the story, he said, show how symbolism and, and metaphor was used in this story. And he's like, I don't even know what those mean. And so he's like, symbolism and metaphor were used very well in this story. Symbolism was used at the beginning of the story. <laughs> metaphors were used at the end of the story. I think symbolism was used better than metaphor, <laughs> but metaphor was used quite well indeed. In conclusion, <laughs> but isn't that how people do? Like, you know, if we would save ourselves a lot of trouble if we would just say, I don't know. <laughs> I'm ignorant of that. You know, I want to know that more about that. Somebody show me the truth. But a lot of times we open up our mind. Well, yeah, well, if you know this and you're just all puffed up, full of full of fluff, right? And it's all, it all stems from pride because you don't really want to learn. You want to make everybody believe that you already know the answers. And we got to make sure that we don't do that. Second Peter 2, 17 says this. Second Peter 2 says, these, I won't give the whole context of the passage, but, it, but you'll see what I'm saying. These are wells without water. Okay, here's something I'm ignorant of. Do you know if there's anywhere in the Bible that says clouds without water? I might have, I might have overlooked that. A lot of people say, is it says the same thing, it says clouds without water. Okay, uh, let me, I'll come back to that, okay. Uh, wells without water, clouds they are, uh, that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak, listen to this, great swelling words of vanity. <laughs> it's like you just see like this just balloon, right? It's just full of air. Great swelling words of vanity. There's nothing. There's no substance. And they speak these great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from uh, them who live forever. Again, I'm not going to give all the context of that, but a parallel passage is in Jude, which maybe it says clouds without water, because I was thinking they did. So funny thing is I read just today, just this morning, I read this article somebody posted, and the, the article was written by David Cloud, and somebody called him David Clouds Without Water, <laughs> okay? And I don't know the man very well. I've read a couple articles that he's written and stuff like that. But in this particular article, it really struck home, because this particular article, he was calling out somebody. He was on their ordination board, and uh, in this independent Baptist, but he was approved. And in this church, uh, this guy decided while, was, while he's studying through Revelation, this happens a lot, believe it or not, studying through Revelations and really had an open mind and said, you know what, I don't know everything, and began reading through Revelation. And he came to the conclusion of something more of a post-trib, pre-wrath view. Now, I don't know what is in, you know, what all influences he might have had to that, but his testimony is he was reading that. And so he says, I want to look into this further. I don't want to teach anything wrong, but I want to, uh, I want to just come to this understanding. And so David Cloud writes this article saying, beware of such and such Baptist church. They're teaching this false doctrine. And, and he's just like calling them out. And he's like, uh, he's like, they've gone down into this Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole. And he's saying, you know, it's got all this error. 
and he's saying, this guy, is I ordained him, I trusted him. Any guy who's in the ministry ought to already have these things settled. And uh, for him to just be flip-flopping on this shows that he wasn't ready to be a pastor. And, and he's just ripping him into this old article. And I read the guy's response, and it was, it was humble, and it was, I would trust that guy way better than somebody who's just throwing all this stuff out there. Because here's what the thing, the article didn't say anything about, like, let me, let me show you why this is wrong and what is right. And the fact is, I've talked to a lot of people, and the conclusion of most of them is, you know, I don't really have all the answers for that. Right. Okay? Yeah. But the majority of them will take a stand somewhere, and they'll say, I don't really care what all the answers for that are. Like, this is what somebody told me is right, and so I'm going to tell you, and they'll just double down, and you say you try to explain to them and say, well, what about this verse? Because I was reading this verse, and I can't see where this verse means that. No. And, and they're not giving you any information. They're just speaking these swelling words and lots of fluff, and they're saying, well, man, you should know better than that, and using these kind of bully tactics and stuff like that and trying to get you. And the thing is, they don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying I know all the answers on this or anything else, but I'm saying I, mean, I, I would trust anybody uh, way better who just says, I'm not really sure exactly on that, than somebody who just can't show you the answer, seems like he doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's just saying, oh, you ought to know this, and he's just, he's just kind of throwing his weight around. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no place for that. We have to recognize that we're ignorant. And, and a lot of times when somebody tries to speak a lot of fluff, and uh, use fancy words and try to make you believe that they're intelligent. They're not. <laughs> Most of the time, that's, that's evidence that they're not, right? They're trying to just use all these flowery words and stuff. It's just like that kid writing that essay question, man. Let me see how I can distract him so that he'll think I know what I'm talking about, but really I don't, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> the third thing about ignorance is this. Those who are ignorant and remain ignorant, are controlled by the powers that be, whatever the case is, okay? Uh, we are, in many ways, sheep, okay? I'll admit that. I'm the same way. I mean, sometimes. I just believe what somebody told me. It's easy, right? They just lead you this direction, and you go that way. Our nation is, is much like that. You can see that our nation is just uh, uh, sheep. It's, it's kind of sad. Whoever would have thought our nation would be like believing and falling for the things that they're believing. Again, I, I'm not saying I'm perfect to understand everything, but I'm looking around thinking, really? There's a guy that's a socialist that might become president? <laughs> I mean, has anybody looked into what socialism actually teaches? You know, has anyone actually looked into, you know, what, what, would, what it would mean? Oh, I'm sorry, democratic socialism. <laughs> okay. Has anybody really looked into that? Has anyone looked at the other nations that practice that form of government and saw where they are right now? And yet our nation is just like sheep. Oh, yeah, this looks like a good guy. And uh, all my friends told me I'm supposed to hate this guy, and so I'm just going to go with this guy. Nobody's even thinking for themselves or trying to figure anything out. Right. And I don't get into politics. That's, that's something that I'm oftentimes willingly ignorant of. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, because I think if we just follow the Bible, a lot of that just, you know, is, isn't important. <laughs> right? So, uh, but I'll tell you this, you won't find the socialist ideas in the Bible, okay? But, uh, but how did we get there? How did we get to a nation that is pushing so hard for everybody to accept LGBT uh, rights, okay? Uh, how did we, I mean, let me read this little bit of an article I read. This lady is a, uh, I don't have anything, I don't know her background law. Is she a Christian, not a Christian? I don't know. All I know is she works with kids, uh, 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 pediatrics, uh, I don't know what her job is, but she works with kids, and she's a doctor. And she wrote this. It's just a little clip I took out of the uh, article. It says, if I walk into my doctor's office today and say, hi, I'm Margaret Thatcher, my physician will say I am delusional and give me an antipsychotic. Yet if... I instead walked in and said, I'm a man, he would say, congratulations, you're, trans, you're transgender. <laughs> if I were to say, Doc, I'm suicidal because I'm an amputee trapped in a normal body, please cut off my leg. I will be diagnosed with a body identity integrity disorder. But if I walk into that doctor's office and say, I am a man, 
sign me up for a double mastectomy, my physician will. <laughs> How did we get so dumb? <laughs> because people are willingly ignorant, right? And when somebody says, oh, you're not supposed to judge, well, we, we also know that that's foolish because there are things they will judge. Like they'll judge whether or not we should judge. Right? But what it comes down to is they're willingly ignorant. Whatever they're told to do, they're going to do it. So you got the public schools. Well, whatever the public school teaches the kids. Okay, let me stop there. If you send your kids to public school, I'm not making not knocking that. I was raised in public school. My wife was. Uh, but, but think about this for a minute. I remember one time driving down, my wife was in the car with me, and we drove down this little girl, maybe seven years old, and she's walking from the car to the, to the school, and then the mom just drives off. And I'm thinking, here's a kid, hadn't even made it to the door yet. They have no idea if that kid ever made it to class. They have no idea when they get behind those doors, because now this mom that dropped her off is going to go to work. They have no idea if that kid is even going to be safe when they're in, you know what I'm saying? They have no idea. They just... Say, hey, this is what we're supposed to do. Send our kids to public school. They go into public school. Public school says, hey, there's this, there's this flu going around. We need to vaccinate everybody. And so they just say, okay, well, so we've got to vaccinate them. We don't want our kids to get sick. And so, I mean, we're just sheep. Whatever they tell us to do, we we'll just do it. I'm not saying, I, again, I don't know. All, I haven't studied everything out, know all the answers for that. But I'm saying uh, when we just allow other people to do all the thinking for us, and tell us what it is we're supposed to do, what it is we're not supposed to do, what it is we're supposed to believe, what it is we're supposed to accept in our society, uh, you know, and they just sit down in front of the TV, whatever's on the media, whatever the news is telling them, they just like, oh, that must be true, that must be true. And then they go to school and the school says, hey, we, you know, uh, uh, we come from monkeys, and they say, well, that must be true. Hey, we, you know, dinosaurs lived 64 million years ago, even though there's soft tissue still found in the fossil, oh, it must be true. You know, till you get to the point where you're knocking on this door and the guy says, well, I'm not saying there's not a God. I'm just saying I have no reason to believe in God because, you know, I just believe uh, we just are an accident, you know. And uh, and it's just it's just like, how do you get to this point? You have to be willingly ignorant. That's what Second Peter said. They're willingly ignorant or or. Uh, yeah. So anyway, Ephesians 4, 11 Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists uh, and some pastors and teachers. Why did he give those? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no, no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is ahead, even Christ." So the purpose of us going to church, hearing preaching, the purpose of us studying our Bibles and all these things is so that we won't be so uh, tossed around with every wind of false doctrine. Now, uh, you say, well, yeah, well, if you're going to church, you know, what about, uh, uh, you know, the preachers telling you what to think, right? Well, maybe if you're Catholic, <laughs> we don't teach that. Hey, I'm not telling you what to think. I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm not. You know what I won't do, and I've heard preachers do this before. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't read or who you can and can't listen to or watch on, on YouTube or something like that. That's ridiculous. I remember talking to teens about that, and, and, and you know what? I couldn't even get most of those teens to even think about spiritual things. Last thing I want to do is tell them, uh, hey, you can't listen to that teacher or that teacher or whatever, because they're watching all kind of garbage out there. I would have been happy for someone to say, hey, the other day I was listening. I just like picking on Joel Osteen. I was just listening to Joel Osteen. 
Well, at least now we can talk about whether what he said was right or wrong, and let's go in the Bible and see where that, see what I'm saying? People have to think. They have to be trying. And I'm not ever going to tell somebody, this is all you can listen to. This is all you can read. This is all you, that's not my job. Okay, look, the Bereans, the Bible says, here, here's uh, Paul talking about these. He says, these were no, or not Paul, but Luke, I guess, is right next. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. I love the fact that I get up here and I can preach something and I can be pretty confident that most people in here, if not everybody, is going to go home and seek that out for themselves. So they're like, I never heard that before. Where is that in the Bible? If I said something that kind of raised the red flag, you're going to be like, let me go check that out. Now, I'm going to tell you this. That intimidates a pastor who is willingly ignorant. That intimidates him. He doesn't want somebody else to learn something he doesn't know because he's got to have the power. Okay. And so he's got to be the one in charge and he's going to tell you what to think and not to think. And if you say, hey, I was wondering about this. Uh, you know, the Bible says here in Matthew 24, oh, wait, 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 that's for the Jews. <laughs> right? Really? Why is it for the Jews? Just trust me on this. Okay, I know I've studied this for many, many years. Many guys before me studied that for many years. How far back? 1900? What about before that? Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> right? Because they have to just know all the answers even though they don't know all the answers. They need to perceive like they are, okay? And so what we need to do is recognize that if we're sheep that are just, con just, just guided by everybody because of our ignorance, uh, that's not going to go well for us. The fifth, uh, fourth thing is this. The first step to not being ignorant is fear and humility. Fear and humi humility. I'll look at a verse there, uh, but first of all, let me just say this. Ignorance, it's okay to be ignorant. It's okay to not know things, okay? But we should be trying to not be ignorant anymore because our ignorance is what's going to hurt us, all right? I can say, you know, I don't even want to know what the speed limit sign is. Don't tell me what the speed limit sign is. I, I want to be ignorant. And when the police officer pulls me over and says, hey, do you know you were speeding? I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Guess what? He's going to say, well, now you do. <laughs> Here's a ticket, right? And you're going to pay a fine or whatever. Look, ignorance, they say ignorance is bliss. It's not. It's expensive. <laughs> ignorance hurts. Okay? <laughs> I can say, you know what? Don't even tell me the tax laws. I don't even care, which I really don't. But <laughs> I don't even care. What are the tax laws, right? And I just trust my CPA to do whatever. And guess what? At the end of the day, if I messed up, didn't report something I was supposed to report, the government's not going to say, oh, you didn't know that? Okay, well, don't worry about it. No, I'm going to have to pay all that and penalties and all that kind of stuff because I was ignorant of the tax law. Okay, that's not good. I told you that I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to math, science, history. I'm trying to learn better in some of these areas. Uh, you say, well, you know, who cares? Why do you need all the things? Because life is frustrating if you don't know, <laughs> know these things. If you don't know simple math, life's going to be tough, you know. Everybody's like, oh, I just got out of math, and I never used that a day in my life. Yeah, well, if you were smart, you probably would be able to use them, and it would get you out of a lot of situations. <laughs> oh, I never had to use that. Well, you probably should have, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 being ignorant is expensive, it's frustrating, and it's harmful. Ignorance of biblical subjects... Well, if you're ignorant of how to be saved, you're going to hell. If you're ignorant, it's, it, oh, that's not my fault, God, I didn't know. The Bible says you're without excuse, Romans. And so you have to, I mean, you're accountable for that. You can't just stand before God and say, oh, I didn't know, God. Right? Ignorance when it comes to that. Ignorance on how to live your life. Look how many people, you know, made some stupid mistakes, destroy their life, and they say, but nobody ever told me that. You know, well, you don't get a pass. You're still going to pay for the dumb things that we do. It's, a, it's called, in fact, you know what the Old Testament calls it? A sin of ignorance, yeah. right? right? It's a sin of ignorance, but you still pay for it. And so the final thing was this, that if you, uh, uh, the first step of not being ignorant about things, and look, we're all going to be ignorant. That's kind of part of the point here, is that we all need to recognize that we're ignorant about some things, okay? And uh, the first thing about not being ignorant is fear and humility. Look, at, look back at Proverbs 1. Uh, Brother Justin read before the sermon. 
And in this proverb, I love this proverb, it's, it's wisdom is personified. And she's saying, how long will you love simplicity? In Proverbs 1, verse 7, says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But look at this. But fools despise wisdom and in instruction. So he says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then in verse 8, he says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Now look, just because we don't, we understand we're not supposed to just trust everybody and believe everything they said, but we're supposed to seek it out for ourselves. We're supposed to know the Bible. Look, that doesn't give, for instance, a child the right to say, my parents don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to find out for myself how to do that. That's foolish, okay? And here's the thing, and I, I just brought this up uh, Wednesday night in Iola, that actually, because we're talking about, we're going through First Peter, and we talked about where it says, uh, servants be subject to your masters and, and wives be subject to your husbands and then it talks about the husbands you know uh, how they're supposed to treat their wives and so what I cho showed them was this right uh, basically all the ways in which we uh, submit to our authorities is just in a nutshell okay it's actually submitting to God right now we don't submit to them above sub our submission to God because God is more important but here's the thing, if I don't submit to the ordinances of man, I should fear because I'm probably going to get caught, right? If I'm just being a rebel, you know, who cares what the law is, what I, I was probably going to come back to bite me. I ought to be afraid. God's not going to let his children just be dumb and get, you know, not, be, not let those things catch up to him, okay? So therefore, if I'm a child and I'm just rebelling against my parents, and I don't listen to what they have to say, and I'm, and I'm disrespecting them or whatever, in essence, I'm disrespecting God. If a wife is not subject to her husband, according to the Bible, she is not submitting to God because God said, look, I don't even care. And look, and servants to masters, it's all the same thing. Look, he says, look, if you're a servant, let me put that in today's term. If you, if you have a job, <laughs> you've got a boss over you, right? It says it doesn't matter if he's gentle and kind. I'm messing up the words. Excuse me, it's in First Peter. Uh, it, it, I mean, uh, yeah, First Peter two. If he's gentle and kind, or if he's harsh, so be subject, sub, submit yourself to him, right? And it says this is thankworthy, and it says it pleases the Father that we do that, that we submit to those who are in authority over us. Again, not more than God, because sometimes we have to obey God rather than man. And if man tells us to do something contrary to what God says. Hey, that's where we draw the line. But in, as much as we can obey our authorities, the Bible says we're obeying God. Okay, so, so that's a kid's first step is to obey their mother and father, not to be like, hey, well, you know what, who cares what they said? It's just the Bible and the Holy Spirit, right? I can just disobey my... No, no, no. The first thing God says is obey your parents, okay? And so, so, uh, so we have to fear God, but sometimes that means fearing man, which is why he goes into that immediately saying... Uh, honor your honor your parents, and then uh, verse uh, ten through nineteen. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, "Come with us, let us weigh, lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily uh, for the innocent without cause, let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit," uh, we shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste uh, to shed blood. Look, one of the ways in which we can, can uh, get smarter and not be ignorant is by looking at the fool and saying, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> I don't want to go down that road. Look, all the things that our flesh might be tempted to do, we can look at somebody in our life out there and say, you know what? When they went down that road, look how they ended up. And we look at that and say, look, I fear that. I don't want that to happen to me. I fear God because God could allow that to happen to me. I fear God because God could, you know, even if, even if I'm getting away with all these things, God could be the one that chastens me. And so we need to fear God, and that will help us to be uh, wise. Verse 22, uh, 
How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? The last thing here is just not to desire simplicity. You know, I come from, uh, uh, you know, I've been in a lot of independent Baptist churches and I've seen a lot of uh, various preachers. And with some preachers, I've even fell down this road myself a few times. It became like this badge of honor to say, like, I don't know anything. I'm just a good old boy. And all I know is the Bible says this. Right. Well, well OK, I understand the Bible's more important. But look, we, we don't need to just be fools. We don't need to be ig- we don't need to be ignorant. And, you know, uh, we don't need to just go through life saying, well, I'm just dumb. But God, no, God has asked us to not be ignorant about things. Right. And, and to search the truth and figure out these things. OK, so don't just love simplicity. So number one was that, uh, let me see how I wrote it again. People are ignorant of what they want to be ignorant of. Number two, people often try to cover up their ignorance with a false intelligence. Number three, the ignorant are controlled by the powers that be. Number four, the first step of not being ignorant is fear and humility. So none of us knows everything. We all, we understand that. No matter how much you think that you know, you've never got it all figured out. In fact, what I've found in life is the, more, the, the farther I get in life and the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And I, and I used to hear people say that and be like, yeah, that sounds real good, but, but I don't know. I mean, there comes a point where you're like, I, know, I just know all the answers. Forget that. Forget that. That's why I, more and more it gets harder for me to just say things dogmatically and be real detailed on all the things that I believe. And I'm just like, I'm doing the best I can. But there's still a lot of things I'm trying to figure out. Oh, well, then you're not you're not uh, uh, qualified to be a pastor then. Yeah, I th- actually, I think someone like that's probably more qualified than somebody just gets up and speaks all these great swelling words and doesn't have a clue what they're saying. <laughs> right? Somebody ought to be humble and be able to say, look, I don't know. I, I, I think I know I can give you some answers. And look, I fall into that. Cat- I mean, I fall into that trap sometimes, too, of, of pretending like I know more than I do. But uh, we should do these things. Here's here's just in conclusion, just a couple of things we need to do. Number one. We should try to learn to grow all that we can, okay? We should try to learn the Bible. Obviously, that's, don't be ignorant. Look, don't know everything about everything else out there in life and be ignorant about the Bible, right? It should be the main thing that we want to gain uh, intelligence about. So, uh, uh, So learn the Bible. Read it. Well, it's so hard to read. It's so confusing. Well, that's why you got to keep studying it. <laughs> that's why you got to learn. I just learned uh, just a couple days ago the difference between, uh, sh- what is it, shouldest? No, what was the word? Help me out. Help me out. Should it? Huh? Believest and believeth. I didn't know what the difference was. If you want to know, ask me afterwards <laughs> or ask Brother Justin. We had to look this up because we were like, what is the difference between believest and believeth? And so, uh, uh, look. I've, I've been studying my Bible a long time, and for some reason, that just I never understood that. Right? There's lots of things you just keep reading, and, and, and here's, a, here's a good tip. Okay? Read through your Bible, and when you get across something, you're like, I don't know what that means. Just keep reading. Just keep reading. Next time you go back through your Bible, you'll get to that again, and, and maybe one of those things that you read will answer that. So just keep reading it. Just keep, allow, allow that you don't know everything. Allow that you have room to grow, but just keep reading. Just keep uh, 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 trying to stretch your mind. Listen to preaching. Don't believe everything the preacher says necessarily, but listen to preaching and let them guide you. And then check the Bible and see if these things are true. Uh, but, but definitely learn the Bible. Number two, learn about people. Learn about people. We won't take the time to go there, but the Bible says, again, 1 Peter 2, uh, or is it Ephesians? I can't remember. I think it's 1 Peter 2. It says, husbands, uh, 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 dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Well, well, why do I have to learn about my wife? Why do I have to be knowledgeable about what she likes and how she, what her like love language is and how you know she re- reacts in certain situations? Why why do I have to learn that? Because it's going to help us live together, <laughs> you know, and have a more pleasing life together. It's going to help me be able to show her my love towards her by understanding her and uh, and and dwelling with her according to knowledge. But look, not just that. You can take that same thing and say, well, what about people I'm trying to minister to? What about people that I'm trying to be a witness to or preach the gospel to? I need to learn a bit. Of, sometimes we need to learn about a culture of people that we, you know, we, when we went into little Congo, it's like uh, I had this desire to just start learning all about that culture and learn as much of that language as I could. Look, I don't have time to spend my whole life on that. But don't you have this desire to get to know them a little bit better because you're trying to reach them? 
different people groups, different types of, learn people, learn about people, learn how people behave, learn how they think, learn how to interact with children. Sometimes you're going to be preaching and uh, there's going to be a child out there, you know, maybe you're talking to the parent and the child or something and learn how children think so that you can, uh, you can better minister to them. Number three, get uh, a good rounded education in all things. I wish I would have listened to my parents when they told me, hey, you're probably not going to be a professional baseball player. You probably don't, might want to study the books. <laughs> right? Because, you know, I thought, yeah, if I don't make it in a base, to, if I don't make it as a baseball player, man, I'm going to be able to have an illustration uh, uh, career, you know, illustrating books and, and drawing and, you know, making artwork and all that. And even though everybody kept telling me, don't do that, that's stupid, you know, study learn things, learn your science and your math and your history and all that kind of stuff. And now this many years later, I'm thinking, well, I sure would be a better speaker if I learned the English language better. I sure would be able to do these things better and understand uh, uh, systematically if I was better at math and all these kinds of things. And so don't be afraid to get, in fact, do as much as you can, get a well-rounded education, but whatever it is you do, don't be willingly ignorant. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Father, thank you. For your word, thank you for uh, just our minds and our ability to think. A lot of people out there uh, with, without the ability to think, a uh, uh, handicapped person, mentally handicapped person today who uh, probably couldn't grasp the gospel that was being preached. And, and I thought, thank the Lord. Thank you, Father, for, for uh, having a mind that can just understand things. Help me not take that for granted, but help me learn and grow in knowledge and, and definitely not to be willingly ignorant. Lord, I ask and I seek the truth, Lord, and you promise that you'd, uh, uh, you would uh, answer that and you would provide. I pray that you help each of us to decide in our hearts that we don't want to be willingly ignorant, but we want to continue to grow in knowledge of your word. And we fear you and, uh, and we trust you that you will uh, guide us and direct us according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.